one of our friends. We always love having the former Red Sox, Kevin Mala. He's uh, joining us from Boston there at City uh, Hall Plaza today. The honorary good humor man today. And before the break, he uh, mentioned one of his favorite stories was when he was with the Red Sox playing the Yankees. George Steinbrenner flipped him off. All right. Tell us the story, Kev. Okay, Danny. So, you know, Aaron Boone, you know, he had to hit a ball to infield. We love our little Booney, but he homers off Blakefield, walks us off the field. I think it was the 11th or 12th inning. Everybody's crying and sad in the locker room. What a great series. Go fight win. We get on the bus, and we got two middle fingers up by the senior flipping us off as we were leaving. I'm like, what just happened? I thought, that's rude. That's mean. Our feelings are already hurt. You just flipped us off. You got 27 rings, and there's no rivalry here. You guys aren't sharing. So where was George Steinbrenner standing when he flipped you off? We were right there. You know, as you pull out of that, there's like that blue tarp when you walk out over there by the player's parking lot. That's where they park the bus. <laughs> and so, yeah, you walk out of the stadium right there. He was there, and it was unbelievable. Because there was, you know, that was when, I believe it was what, what Larry Lachino called, the, you know, the Yankees, uh, well, I forget, what, what do you call them, Mark? Remember they got a little Darth Vader or whatever the evil, it was? The evil empire? There you go, the evil empire. So it kind of started the whole thing, and then now here's the old three team. We were you know, a little bit different than the Yankees. And, yeah, it all happened, and it came out on the middle fingers of George Steimer. Well, wait, if you look back at it now, yeah. it's hilarious. Like, yeah. it's like, that's funny. Back then, I think we all want to jump out and choke somebody out. But it was uh, part of the skit. Yeah, but the Yankees won. Yeah, but you know what he's saying? See you later. Go ahead. Go back to Boston. Uh, you're number one in our book. <laughs> It, it, and that was the thing. It was such a great series, and it happened. I was just throwing the ball in, Danny. I was just rolling ground balls to the middle infield. Here you go. Here you go, Nomar. Here you go, everybody. And then I throw the ball in. First pitch, Wakefield throws. Booney goes deep. I'm like, what just happened? I wasn't even ready to get my position yet. And now I got 67,000 people jumping around, cowboy down. After uh, what happened with the Jets, with Geno Smith getting punched by a teammate, it, it seems like any time anybody is interviewed now, it's did you ever have one of those moments? So given the Red Sox personalities there, was there ever anybody punch anybody, a real fight? You know what? No. I mean, there wasn't a real fight in our clubhouse. I mean, you could have – I think that's the thing now is that players are soft. You get on somebody now, and it's always wants to become a fight. You know, we got egos now, Danny. We're making millions and multi-millions of dollars. You can't tell me you get in the dugout. I'm making $20 million a year. So I think now you get soft. Back then, it was it was a constructive criticism. Now, I don't know what happened. You hear you hear Gino owed some money for some foundation and asked for the money, and next thing you know, bam, you lose it too, you know? But it's almost like an old-school way to do things. But these days, they're soft. You can't say anything to any players. So, but, but we always got on guys, but it was never a fight. You know, we did it because we loved each other, if that made sense, Dan. Yeah. Even Schilling? Uh, no, I, I punched him. But was, <laughs> <laughs> no, even Schilling. Even Schilling in that. He was so tired of his dress, his, his wardrobe. I mean, he wore the big, long jerseys, you know, and the old hockey jerseys. And he had, remember, we talk about him a lot. Yeah. But let's get right to his calves. Terrible calves, <laughs> terrible skin color, pale white, pasty white, you know, Alaska-type skin color. <laughs> uh, but Kurt Schilling, one of, one of the greatest big game pitchers in the history of the game, man. Yeah. You could hit him. Oh, you couldn't my hit him. God. You couldn't hit him. Hey, I homer off a true story. I homer off him in in, in Florida. It's the one thing I, I had it was showing. Oh. I homered. I said it was a bomb. It was three hundred thirty and a half feet. It was just a line drive <laughs> that went right over that one little. Remember old Pope Player Stadium? There was that three thirty spot. Oh. It was right over the yeah, right over this 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 little white line. And I said, bro, it was a bomb. I was circling the pillows, but that Doug Mayer barely went deep off him. In game two, an in, in inter squad game, and, he, and no matter what, it's spring training. So Dougie would always circle around the locker room saying, I took your team, Phil. <laughs> hey, have, it was great. have fun in Boston today. Always good to catch up with you, buddy. All right, Dave. Thank you, buddy. All right. Kevin Malam, Major League Baseball Network analyst, the honorary good humor man today in uh, Boston.